Hey everybody, so today I got a tech video about the Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G from Verizon. So we're going to be talking about some tech specs, some more in-depth information about the screen. And uh, so please stick around, check out the video, and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Alright everybody, so... Um, today we're going to be talking about the Galaxy Note 10 plus 5G by Verizon. So I got some specifications that I want to um, actually go over. So some of these specifications are Just a little bit of information about you know the S10 information about the Note 10. Actually, S10 broke over a dozen display-related records in DisplayMate's testing. New generation is here. Dynamic AMOLED screen on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus broke 12 display records, with major performance characteristics seeing improvements. The screen set the record for absolute color accuracy, contrast, intensity, scale accuracy, automatic color management. Make sure that the correct color profile is used when displaying content so you don't have to worry about display modes. If you do want to select mode manually, DCI-P3 Natural achieves an absolute color accuracy of 0.4 JNCD, which is a new record. The screen is among the first to reach 100% DCI-P3 coverage thanks to the deep red OLED sRGB natural mode, also results in a 0.4 JNCD. This mode is commonly used for photos and videos from camera, TVs, and other content. The display on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus is brighter than ever. High brightness mode turned on, it reaches up to 778 nits with an all white screen, beating the Note 9 screen by 10%. The peak brightness is a record setting 1308 nits, though with much less of the screen showing white. View angles are not quite perfect, however the white shift at a 30 degree angle is 2.8 JNCD, small enough that is unlikely you'll notice, but the Galaxy S10 scored a 0.7 JNCD in this metric. Both displays lose just under 25% of their brightness when viewed at a 30% angle. Full list of 12 display performance records matched or broken by the Note 10. Highest absolute color accuracy at 0.4 JNCD. Visual indistinguishable from perfect highest image contrast accuracy and intensity scale accuracy 2.17 gamma visually indistinguishable from perfect small shift in color accuracy and intensity scale with the image content <laughs> sorry about that apl 0.03 gamma, visually indistinguishable from perfect, smallest change in peak luminance with the image content average picture level APL6 perfect, highest full screen brightness for OLED smartphone 793 nits at 100% APL, highest peak display brightness at 1308 nits from low APL, largest native ga color gamut 113% DCI-P3 and 142% sRGB record 709. Lowest screen reflectance 4.3%, highest contrast rating in ambient light 184 for 100% APL and 304 for peak brightness. Small smallest brightness variation with viewing angle 24% at 30 degrees. Highest visible screen resolution 3K 3040 by 1440. 4K does not appear visually sharper on a smartphone. That's that information right there. And then a um, little bit of 
inform uh, information. Most of the information I wanted to provide was the the peak knits information because that um, I was trying to compare it between the S10 and the Note 9 for the knits um, display brightness. Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Um, represent the technological peak of Samsung smartphones offering for 2019. I have tested the unique features of the Note 10 series and must see waypoints on the smartphone quest of what I was looking for for technological advancements. So um, information that I have come up with is uh, this list that I had written down. Um, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus is the true successor of the Galaxy Note 9. To uh, essentially understand that the base Galaxy Note 10 non Plus is fact an extension of the Note, Note family footprint, Samsung should have called it the Galaxy Note 10e to match the positioning of the Galaxy S10e. Specific highlights, the Galaxy Note 10 has a few key differences with the, f from the Note 10 Plus. 6.3 inch display with a lower resolution, smaller size and weight, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and not capable of charging with the 45 watt fast, super fast charger. Difference between specific specification and highlights between the Galaxy Note 10 and now Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Price is $949 for the Galaxy Note 10. For the Galaxy Note 10 Plus it's $1,099 which is actually not correct because I actually paid $1,497. Um, and this was information I was provided before I ordered and everything else. Galaxy Note 10 has a 6.3 inch 2280 by 1080 p display. The Note 10 Plus has a 6.8 inch 30, 3040 by 1440 display. Both of them are HDR 10 Plus. Um, 26 millimeter by 12 millimeter um, F by 1.5 wide primary camera. They both have the same camera plus OIS. Rear camera is a 52 millimeter by 12 millimeter. F by 2.1 zoom plus OIS 13 millimeter 16 megapixel. F by 2.2 ultra wide. The camera information is the same on both phones uh, between the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus. Selfie camera is a 25 millimeter by 10 megapixel f2.2 uh, wide, same as the Note 10 Plus as well. Uh, between the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus, they both have a Snapdragon 855 SoC. The difference between the 10 and the 10 Plus is the 10 comes with an 8 gigabyte RAM option and a 12 gigabyte RAM option. The Note 10 Plus only comes with a 12 gigabyte RAM option. Computing, 128 gig and a 512 gig storage plus micro SD XC card slot. Um, 128 gig to 512 gig is the Galaxy Note 10. There is no micro SD XC card slot on the Galaxy Note 10. On the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, there is a 256 gig option and a 512 gig option. This one is a 512 gig option. It does have a micro SD XC card slot on the Note 10 Plus. The Galaxy Note 10 has a 3600 milliamp battery. The Galaxy Note 10 Plus has a 4300 milliamp battery. They both support wireless charging. Both support Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0. They both have an IP68 water resistant rating Galaxy Note 10 is 168 grams or 5.9 ounces. Uh, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus is 996 grams or 6.9 ounces. Design factor is 
151 by 71.8 by 79 display dimensions or outer phone dimensions for the Note 10. The Note 10 Plus is 162 by 77.2 by 5 by 7.9. So it's significantly different in size. The price market is, like I stated, $949 for the Galaxy Note 10. 10, $1,099 for the Galaxy Note um, 10 Plus, but it actually is a little higher than that at $1,497 or $98. Um, and that's through for Verizon. The Note 10 Plus 5G is identical to the Note 10 Plus, except that it has a discrete 5G modem capable of both sub-6 and MM Wave 5G connectivity. My takes on this, the Galaxy Note 10 series has a beautiful design and this year Samsung has pushed the dual curved glass concept to a new level by having the rear glass curve onto the edge slightly past the middle, giving it an ultra smooth edge. For every glass phone we, we as me and my family and friends, use a protective case we advise you to but it is interesting to see that samsung's repair prices are lower than apple's especially for back panels you're a bit clumsy that might be something to take into consideration at, at the same time the screen curved is still pr present to give the illusion of having an infinity edge not n as much previously to avoid possible false positive touch action Ultra thin bezels, really impressive, all around pushing the edge of the amyloid panel as far as modern technology can, uh, can today. The difference between a 1mm and a 1.3mm bezel may not seem huge, but visually it makes a world of difference. Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus is a large phone in terms of width and height. And to give an example of that, I have the Note 10 Plus and I have the Note 8. And if you look get up pretty close, the screen on the Note 8 is significantly um, smaller than the Note 10 Plus. Um, I have looked if the what the screen displays on and you can tell that the Note 10 Plus display is quite a bit wider. They're about the same height. This um, I don't remember the tech specs on this one. I believe this one is a 6.3 inch. Let me grab The six and five eighths, so it's it's roughly about six point five or so. Let me measure it again. I'll go this way. Six and a half. Yep. So it is exactly 6.5 inches where the Note 10 is 6.8 inches. So the Note 8 is significantly smaller at a 6.5 inch display. The Note 10 is a 6.8 inch display. And you can actually see the difference. It's at 6 and 3 quarters. So, um... You can, if you had both of these devices in front of you, you could literally see the difference that this one is the same height upwards, but from he, this, from this corner here to this corner is actually narrower than 
from here to here. And if I try to get them up close, you can see even with the, they both have the same OtterBox case, you can see that it is definitely wider on the screen for the Note 10 Plus. But to go back to information that I was providing, Galaxy Note 10 Plus is a large phone in terms of width and height, but because it is thin, 7.9 millimeters, it has an equivalent overall volume to the Hawaii P30 Pro, negative 1.3% of the size, yet the design has managed to feature 20%, 21% higher battery density than the iPhone XS Max at 711 milliamp cubic inch. Note 10 Plus has just a little more battery, plus 2.3% than the P30 Pro, but is incredible to achieve this within the, the design, same design footprint with an integrated pen. Even leaving the aesthetics aside is the most impressive phone design I have seen. Only significant collateral damage is the 3.5 millimeter audio port that has been removed. There is no 3.5 millimeter adapter in the box either, but it does pair, uh, come with a pair of USB-C earphones are included. The Galaxy Note 10 has an IP68 rating, water resistant, can submerge in water like every other phone in this price range. Power button is now to the left of the phone instead of the awkward upper right position found on the Galaxy S10 Plus. Same button has merged with what was previously the Bixby button. Now this is an, uh, a feature I do not like. I wish they would have left. Go away. I wish they would have left the power button on this side and let and the leave the Bixby button where it is. There is no power button on this on the Note 10. They move the power button to the Bixby button and conjoins the bi conjoin the Bixby button and the power button as the same button. So if you wanted to use the Note 10 as just the power button, you have to go into settings and to change it. So if you hold the old Bixby button, I have it set to when I hold it, it gives me the power options. They did add, however, if you scroll down to the bar, or the lamp shade or notification menu, you can see a little power button right here. So they did make the software a little easier if you just wanted to use that instead of using the button. But because I've been using Notes since the Note 1, I am so used to the button that holding that button down, it pops that option up. So if you want that feature, you have to change it in the button settings, the side key settings. You can do power off menu, which is what I have it set to, or wake Bigsby for the press and hold. For the double press, open an app, open Bigsby, and quick, quick launch camera. So if you double press, it opens the camera. Now, um, one thing I wish they would have done on this software, and maybe Samsung might see this video, I really wish the press and hold wake Bigsby, I wish that was on the double press. I wish the, the wake Bigsby, instead of being on press and hold, I wish it was up here. That way I can have um, the power off menu as the press and hold, and I can have Wake Bigsby as the double press, so I can I can utilize this button for both features. As it's set now, you can either have Bigsby or you cannot have Bigsby. Be right back. So my problem. 
and I, I hope Samsung sees this video and I hope they fix this feature because what is the point of combining the Bigsby and the power button into one button if you can only use one of them at a time? I have power off menu set to the button for press and hold because that's what I'm used to on this one. Press and hold. When they added this feature, they didn't think to add the Wake Bigsby option up to the double press. Because they added Open Bigsby on the double press, but all Open Bigsby does is it opens the application for you. What I would prefer to see is the Wake Bigsby up here, because if you double press, what it will do is it will wake Bigsby up, it will pop at the top of the screen, and it will literally listen to you talking to it. The open Bigsby just opens the app. You still have to manually click on the Bigsby icon to tell it to do what you want. So to me, this feature is kind of redundant. They should have added the wake Bigsby up here to the double press, and they should have um, left the press and hold you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be an issue if they had Wake Bigsby in the press and hold and they had it in the double press menu. That would make sense to me. So, just a little food for thought on that issue that I don't like. Okay, so back to what I was talking about. Power button is now to the left. Uh... The same button is merged with the say it was previously the Bigsby Samsung Smart Assistant, but which now launches with a long press. This might be a matter of personal preference, but I like the change somewhat. For many years now, Samsung has been keeping the best display crown, and this time no different. For a large phone perspective, this 6.8 inch 30x40x1440 by 40 by Amloy display is the largest among peer competitors and it has excellent pixel density at 495 ppi. Color rendering of 142% at sRGB gamut and brightness. Galaxy Note 10 Plus display has no equal. It has a max, complete max, of 1335 nit brightness, making it much more readable than competitive screens, which often can barely reach 700 nits. That's 40% brighter than the P30 Pro, 24% brighter than the iPhone XS Max, along with 20% to 30% better color rendering. So superior uh, resolution and color rendering were not enough. Samsung is innovating on other display features such as reducing nefarious blue wavelength, bad for sleep among other things, while maintaining leading edge color rendering. Display houses the same ultrasonic fingerprint sensor found in the Galaxy S10 series, but the software has improved because the average unlock time is noticeably better in the, ex the experience I have found. The ultrasonic fingerprint sensor works better with wet hands than optical sensors. That's very handy when you quick wash your hands before using the phone. With a camera IQ of 177 in the camera IQ benchmark, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus is the number two mobile camera on the market, just behind the Hawaii P30 Pro camera. We recommend um, I'll take that back. I misspoke, I wrote it wrong. Um, Daylight, night zoom, and ultra-wide image quality. If you don't have time, here's the bottom line. The Samsung Galaxy Note 10 has an excellent rear camera system that can shoot 13mm ultra-wide, 27mm wide, and 52mm zoom. For example, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus is general generally better than the Hawaii P30 Pro and shooting more realistic color at dusk or of food photos is short. The Galaxy Note 10 generally has a superior white balance. OEMs sometimes build a loyal following with specific style of image filtering 
having a camera that it can reliably capture the original mood and color hues, make the photo experience more controllable and predictable. Galaxy Note 10's rear camera has really been designed to capture what your eyes see and does an outstanding job even in very low light conditions. However, it doesn't have a night vision capability to reveal details that the naked eye wouldn't usually see. Night mode is supposed to compensate for it, and it does a great job at making things supernaturally bright. However, the Hawaii P30 Pro remains the phone that can turn night into day, quite literally without long exposure. Samsung Super Steady Video. Recording mode is also something, something that is highly desirable for action-minded users. And for anyone who wants to film a video while walking or driving is a significant improvement over the Galaxy Note 9. It is more steady than any other smartphone videos we've looked at. But that is, that's not it. Thanks to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 computing power, the Galaxy Note 10 is able to shoot videos at, back, uh, at bokeh background blur which is a fantastic way of highlighting subjects in a video. Finally, videos can be edited with a new built-in video editor that is optimized for the Samsung S Pen. There is countless video editing apps in Android. I'm not going to read any more about the camera. Um, 4300 milliamp battery capacity and measured charge speed at of 86 milliamps a minute. The Samsung Galaxy Note 10 marks a considerable step up from the Galaxy S10 series, which charges at a rate of 53 milliamps per minute. For reference, the fastest charging we've seen is 100 milliamps at the P30 Pro, and the slowest is 20 milliamps the iPhone XS Max. The speed can be obtained with the 25 watt charger in the box, but from what I have tested, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G actually beats the Hawaii P30 Pro's 100 milliamps per second charge rate with the 40 the 45 watt super fast charger. I did the testing on that, and it came out to 135 milliamps per minute charge rate. For the 45 watt fast charger for the Galaxy Note 10, which is significantly 30 milliamps faster than the Hawaii P30 Pro. The Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G is also USB C PD power delivery standard capable. But I have tried the 65 watt USB C PD charger um, from Taurus, and it does not charge the device any faster than 25 watts. So you do have to use the, the 45 watt Samsung fast charger for the device to actually function properly. Galaxy Note series has always been centered around productivity and Samsung has pushed the envelope every year since Samsung DeX, Samsung Desktop Mode for smartphones, can now run as an app inside a Windows PC or Mac, lets you use the Galaxy Note like a virtual desktop computer via USB-C cable. Great for different scenarios. First, many chat apps don't have desktop versions, so you can now use them desktop-like productivity Productivity, secondly, you may have subscription-based apps or enterprise apps that only run on Android. Finally, you may want to, to do something with photos or videos located on your phone without having to copy them over. In this new DeX windowed mode, you can use the phone at the same time as the screen, not cloned at all. If you were wondering, legacy features of DeX, such as being connected directly to the monitor without PC and Mac, will still still work as they did with the Galaxy Note 9, since I have always had a laptop or desktop computer nearby. 2019 Samsung DeX is the best version yet. The S Pen 
close to the conclusion because it is the de defining feature of the phone. First, it's awe-inspiring how Samsung was able to build the chassis to accommodate the pen in a thin, ultra-powerful smartphone design. The S Pen is an active pen that recharges every time you put it back into the phone. After 6 mn of charge, you can use it for about 10 hours. According to Samsung, so the battery is virtually never a problem. S Pen has a programmable button that lets you trigger the camera shutter or flick to the next pre presentation slide. This year, it gets an internal motion sensor that allows you to use gestures called air actions. You can turn it on its main axis to switch to from the selfie rear camera, flick it left right to control an image gallery or move up and down to adjust the volume. It's all depending on the context. Third party developers have access to the S Pen API and more of that will be promoted during the upcoming Samsung Developer Conference SDC in San Jose, October 29th. The pen has a narrow shape, which is fine, agreeable to write with during short meetings. One hour and Samsung mastered the pen design, tip design, using materials that feel like good and natural when writing on the glass. It's not like plastic gliding feel that you get with other S Pens. Depending on the app you use, handwritten notes can be converted into text. For clean and final storage or export the Microsoft Word to the quality of conversion with the depend, depend on your writing style. Finally, apps mm -hmm. like Screen Off Memos let you write quick notes without unlocking the phone or upon writing. You even hear a very suitable pen and paper sound classic touch. Technologically, objectively, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 has an excellent chassis design, second only to the S10 Plus, the best display on the market, one of the best mobile camera systems, leading performance, excellent battery and capacity, and charge speed. More subjectively, the Galaxy Note 10 is perfect phone for large screen fans in that category is the best you can get today short of fold foldable phones such as the Galaxy Fold which has just been released to the public I have another few minutes um, of information that I wrote down because I'm actually reading you the article I wrote um, Galaxy Note 10 Plus is perfection, designed for productivity and fulfills its mission of making the user more productive as a standalone handset, but also as the brain of a real desktop computing experience and a unique feature that can quickly become addictive if you use it often. For pen lovers, the original Galaxy Note crowd, the Galaxy Note series remains undefeated and most mostly unchallenged the gap between the note 10 potentially competitors is larger than ever before finally if you want the 5g in all of its flavors samsung galaxy note 10 plus 5g is one of the best options you can find in today's context the galaxy note 10 is perfection that is the rest of my notes thank you guys for watching i hope this information is helpful to you um, I did skip some of what I wrote about the camera. Um, I skipped a little bit of what I wrote about the poss the, the link to Windows. Um, phone app in Windows is possibly the clone phone screen and quickly access the SMS notification or camera roll for drag and drop copies. You can use any app just as if you were on the phone. Again, link to Windows boosts your productivity by using a real keyboard and mouse combo, but you won't have access to multi-window or desktop apps you would with the Samsung DeX. It's more like a remote desktop functionality. So if you want the Samsung DeX feature, um, you would want to buy the Samsung DeX dock. If the f What I'm describing here is talking about the Samsung DeX functionality by just plugging the phone into a computer. The new Galaxy Note 10 has where if you use a USB-C cable, you can plug it into your computer and the, com the phone will turn, the computer will actually turn into what looks like your phone. 
Um, so it's kind of a mirroring your phone onto the computer without having to spend the hundred something dollars on the deck station. But if you want the deck station and the functional apps and all that separate stuff, you would want to buy the deck station. It's a little uh, keyboard and mouse combo, but won't have access to multi windows or desktop apps, and you would you as you would with the Samsung Dex dock. More like a simple remote desktop functionality. There's a little competition in the space and other OEMs often require users to buy a computer of the same brand for this functionality. Um, and the, there was a little bit on Samsung DeX that I did not talk about because that was a good probably four paragraphs. Um, I did talk about the charging. Um, Four hundred percent more storage than the base iPhone 11 Pro model. You will get even more options at lower prices thanks to the next-gen Snapdragon 700 series with integrated 5G, but also chips like the Kirin 990, which recently won an um, Best of the IFA Award. H2 2020 is a full year away. One of the best 4G LTE modem Cat 20. 2 gigabytes per second, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus wireless performance is not far away from 5G handsets using sub-6 connectivity, but it is if you want to enjoy the latest 5G technology and MM wave speeds near 1 gigabyte in ideal scenarios, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G handset to look at the special, especially with the MM wave enabled carries such as Verizon Wireless. When the office or at home, the Galaxy Note 10 is capable of Wi-Fi 6, the latest local wireless networking standard that is under development for many years to come now. That is just a little bit more on that. 5G modem. The Qualcomm 5G modem that is currently the most popular option outside of China and the general Samsung is expected to lead the market thanks to the 5G modems for the Galaxy S10 Plus or Note 10 Plus at the high end of the Galaxy A90 in the $700 market range. Keep in mind that the 5G is currently being developed and coverage is relatively sparse. Different carriers will also support 5G bands combinations at the moment. Verizon is the only game in town when it comes to Note 10 Plus 5G, but keep an eye out for other companies like AT&T. That is going to be a majority of my notes if anybody wants to um, ask me questions what and you know is there a specific thing you guys would want me to answer or find out please let me know um, again thank you guys so much for watching this is going to be quite a long video somewhere around the 40 minute range um, so if you guys don't want to watch this whole video I, I don't blame you nope not a big deal if you do um, watch the whole video I appreciate you watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon for future updates. Go check out my Amazon affiliate links. And um, it don't cost you anything. If you go check out my Amazon affiliate links, shop like you normally would. Just use my link to get to Amazon. It will help me do, um, help me give me a little bit more money to do videos more like this and more in-depth videos. It also helps me buy tools. Um, to give you guys more content so if you can please go check out use one of my Amazon affiliate links you don't need to buy what's on my link but you know just use my link to get to Amazon and go buy whatever you want um, I appreciate your guys this time thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video peace okay everybody so some of the it recorded for 38 minutes, and when I went to click record again, it, the camera's only showing 25 minutes, so there's some information missing. Um, what I left off at was the P30 Pro um, shot. Um, instantaneous, and you do not need to wait for five to seven seconds for the photo to be shot, as we mentioned. Um, or I mentioned our P30 Pro night photo test. The photo is exceptionally 
taken for the artistic purpose. The Samsung Super Steady Video Recording Mode is also something that's highly desirable for action-minded users. And For anyone who wants to film a video while walking or driving, it's a significant improvement over the Galaxy Note 9. It's more steady than any other smartphone video we've looked at. But that is not. Thanks to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 computing power, the Galaxy Note 10 is able to shoot videos with Coheem background blur, which is a fantastic way to highlight a subject in a video. Finally, videos can be edited with a new built-in video editor that optimized for Samsung S Pen. There is countless video editing apps on the Android, but it is a great to have a free option from Samsung. Selfie camera, very good, but S10 is a little better. Because the Galaxy Note 10 is only has one camera on the front, large aperture modes, photos are a bit more precise on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus and is dedicated depth sensor on the S10 Plus has fewer separation issues between the subject and the background. We've noticed some image filters as the skin seemed to bit airbrushed in the portrait mode. Standard photo mode, the image quality is very good. Samsung has made considerable self selfie quality progress with the Galaxy S10 introduction. Photos are sharp, not over filtered. They appear more natural than in portrait mode and less filtered than some Chinese brands front camera module on the Note 10 also has slightly inferior hardware than the S10 Plus with an aperture of f.2.2 uh, instead of, of f1.9. The estimated sensor size comparable to the Galaxy Note at the Galaxy S10 Plus at 15 millimeter. In bright light and the aperture difference such isn't much of an issue but to obtain better results Samsung has added a night mode which is a long exposure photo. The exposure duration depends on how dark the picture is, which is great. Other night modes often have a set number of photos to be taken, several dozen, and are very slow. Note that most competitors, including the, the S10, as of the public date, don't have a night mode for selfies. So if you're willing to strike a pose, you might get much better results with a Note 10. Not surprisingly, the Galaxy Note 10 exhibits excellent system performance thanks to the Snapdragon 855 computing platform. Paired with the 8GB Note 10 or 12GB RAM for the Note 10 Plus, at least 256 gigs of storage is 400% more storage than the base iPhone 11 Pro model comparable prices. And, um... Also, scroll back in my notes, trying to re-explain some of the information that might have been lost. I believe I went over the CAT 22 gigabyte per second and the Wi-Fi 6. I went over the battery, but I'll go over it again just in case. 4300 milliamp battery capacity and measured charge speed of 86 milliamps a minute. The Samsung Galaxy Note 10 marks a considerable step up from Galaxy S10 series, which charges at a rate of 53 milliamps a minute. For reference, the fastest charging we've I've seen, and we've seen being my wife and uh, a couple of my friends, um, is a hundred milliamps a second for the P30 Pro. But the P30 the P30 Pro is actually slower at a hundred milliamps a second charge rate if you're using the Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G's 
capable 45 watt Samsung charger, which is the super fast charger. That showed up as a record of 138 milliamps per second, which is 38 milliamps per second faster than the Hawaiian P30 Pro. This speed can be attained. The the 80 something milliamps per second speed can be obtained with the 25 watt charger that came in the box. Um, Galaxy Note 10 is also capable of USB-C power delivery standard, but when we when I tried the 65 watt USB-C PD charger by Taurus, I did not get an improvement change of any kind. So in order to get the super fast charging speeds that you would want, you're going to have to use the 45 watt Samsung super fast charger. You're not going to get it from a Taurus 65 watt power delivery charger that you could buy at Walmart. Um, the deck station um, is another point. Uh, I might have to remake this video. We're just going to find out how it comes out. Um, but the DeX function, or if you plug the USB-C from the phone to USB-C on, on your computer, or USB-C to USB-A on a computer, the phone for DeX mode acts as a kind of a... Um, a window mode or a um, a mirroring where if you use the actual DeX um, dock um, you have app functionality and some other stuff um, so that's something you might be considering if you really really want the the application availability you're going to want to get the DeX station um, if you just want to mirror your phone on your computer you can just use what the Note 10 Plus came with um, as an option. Link to Windows boosts your productivity by using a real keyboard and mouse combo, but you won't have access to the multi-window or desktop apps as you would with a Samsung DeX station. It's more of a simple remote desktop functionality. Um, hopefully all the information mm -hmm. I gave helps. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of information that I skipped over in my article that I wrote of what I found. Um, but, you know, if, if I have to redo the video, I can always redo the video. It's not a big deal. Thank you guys for watching.